Yo, Dirty, what's poppin'? It's your Dirty Starter Cam Chicken in one time for the one time, and I am back on Dirty Daily with another podcast. Yes, welcome into the Dirty Daily Podcast. We have a Dallas native, you know, um, by way of Texas, you know, she's definitely got some accolades up under her belt. She's representing 1501. Shout out to Carl Crawford. We've got Miss Erica Banks in the building. <laughs> You know, I'm just doing my thing. Got my single going, but it's just going crazy. Tooth that is the next single that's been going crazy. And really, I just been, you know, spreading my sound throughout the states and just doing my thing in this pandemic. So, well, let's get into it. First and foremost, kudos to you. You know, I gotta give you a slow clap because that's, that's <laughs> you know, you deserve all the kudos because you've been working pretty damn hard out here in a pandemic, sis. Because, like, a lot of people do not know where this pandemic is gonna take us. You know, should I do shows? Should I not do shows? How much speed are the crowd going to be when I get there? Or, you know, right. as an artist, you think about that type of stuff. I know I would if I was out there, you know, trying to figure out how the, yeah. how the health regulations are going to be when you get to a, uh, to a show. How has it been for you? Um, It hasn't been that bad. Now I have had, you know, several shows canceled, like college homecomings and stuff like that because of the groups of people. But we've still been able to shoot music videos. Of course, I can still go to the studio. Um, I can still link up with other artists. So we've just been finding, you know, other avenues and other ways to get it done. But um, we've been able to do quite a bit. So it hasn't really stopped too much. Right. That's good. And you represent a, a camp that is known for um, bringing a lot of great artists to the table. Um, Carl Crawford, uh, again, shout out to Carl Crawford, 1501 yes, certified. Um, so tell me about how that got into play. So like the day you signed or the day before you signed, like how did that, how did I, how did that all build up? Um, it was crazy. It actually happened through an Instagram live. Um, Carl was on live one day and people were, you know, um, showcasing their music and he was just giving feedback. So I decided to send my single in, which was Bussy. And he liked it. He gave me great feedback. And then maybe a couple of weeks after that, he reached out to me personally. And um, me and my family came down here and I joined the team. Wow. Simple as that. I mean, great yeah. talent, of course, is going to speak for itself. And of course, you are a great talent. But you've only been rapping for so long. How long have you been rapping? This is my third year. Wow. And yeah. being, being that you've only been rapping for three years, right? Who are, who are some people that you you know, you get your inspiration from when it comes to rapping? Nicki Minaj and Missy Elliott would be the top two, like the top tier people. Okay. And would you yeah. like, was there, if there was ever a dream collaboration, would, would you want, of course, of course, Nicki Minaj and Missy Elliott, I love both of them hands right. down, but outside of them, is there any dream collaborations that you look forward to in the business? Lil Wayne and Future, or one of them, you know, either or, I'll take either or. Okay. Okay. That'd be yeah. dope. No, that actually would be dope. So like, let me know we're, we're at this single, we're at the single bus it right now, but you also have a follow-up single. See, a lot of people understand that before you break the mold, you got to have a plan. See, right come on now I'm preaching now. So before you break the mold, <laughs> you got to have a plan. And my sister had a plan y'all. You hear me? So she yeah. had the single bus it. She already had that one in, 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 in the, in the, in the holster. You know, but she also got another clip, a whole nother clip. Right. You know, with Toot That. Now, how did the Toot That song come about? Toot That, um, it was just really another day in the studio. Shout out to Sarge and Jay who produced that. Um, also the D Mac who produced that. And we were just in the studio and we were just thinking like, what kind of sample could we use that everybody knows? You know, because we had already used Bussy. And so I was like, let's try Pop Back and Drop it. Let's see how that sound. So we tried the um, sample, you know, big shout out to Huey. Um, and that's how it went. You know, they made the beat. I got on it. And um, I actually recorded Toot That back in December. So now it's just now getting this just due. So. No, that's real. And, 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 um, and, and you know, and condolence to his family and to his people and to the whole St. Yeah. Louis. Um, we lost Huey, you know, this year too. Like we've lost so many other people, but I mean, it's crazy that as your song that really is really about to revamp everybody who doesn't know who Huey is from the loo. Yeah. It, it's crazy how he dies like this, you know, did yeah. you guys, did you guys ever speak before, um, before the single got released? 
We never did. We never did. I want to say, though, um, I want to say that someone, you know, talking about me or referring to me or something like that. Because I went to Atlanta and, of course, I met a lot of people. Right. And so um, I met Stewie. Um, Stewie's, you know, real good, real good model in Atlanta. And uh, he let me know that, you know, y- y'all were supposed to meet. You know, I brought you up. Now, I don't know if he heard the song, but I know Stewie did mention Erica Banks to him, you know. Right. But I wish I would have got a chance to meet him. But, you know, it's all good because I'll be able to, you know, carry on his legacy. So. And that's the that's the thing that's the number one thing that matters. So like now that you have these two singles, you <clears throat> you're literally on a great path. Let's keep it real. You're literally on a great path. Like you have a great team, you have a great support system, you have great music. You know what is some of the feedback you've been getting from some of your new fans and and even you know your day ones people that have known you from from day one. They're just you know really proud of me. They tell me all the time they're proud of me. They tell me all the time that they've seen my growth in my music. And, you know, they've been here. A lot of people been here since I was on SoundCloud, you know. So the people that's been here that long, they're just happy to, you know, be on the journey with me. So they proud of me like crazy. As they should be. So let me ask you this. What's the number one misconception about Erica Banks? Um, A lot of people think that I'm... I'm not gonna say rude, but a lot of people think I'm rough or I'm like this real savage. And I'm just like, my music is totally different from my personality. Like I'm not the bitch in the room, you know what I'm saying? Um, But I can be if need be, let's not get twisted. But I'm really a sweetheart and a lot of people don't know that, unless you know me personally. Right. So, I mean, if there's there's ever a situation where, um, I'm gonna just draw, you know, a, a dart in the hat and see what I get out of this question. Um, being that she was signed to 1501 and being that you are, you know, kind of like the next bubbling thing that's coming out of 1501, could we ever see a Meg the Stallion and an Erica Banks collab? I know that's a question that a lot of people have probably asked. We can definitely see that, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't base my decisions off of society or what society is saying or what they think or whatever. Uh, so I would definitely be open to doing a collab with Megan Stallion at any time. So, yeah, I think it'd actually be dope as fuck, you know? Was, why not? <laughs> Tell me who you telling. First of all, because, like, I feel like the women's empowerment in the music industry right now is so, so... Um, needed and it's so uh, it's so vexed that people want to see it more you know what I mean a lot of people hate on it but guess what a lot of people like it too you know so it's yeah. like you got you got to give and you got to give a little in, in, in order to take a little you know what I mean and right. get in between it and figure out how you know these ladies can continue to do and carry the torch that they've been carrying so it's like you're still a new artist but there's so many women that are even now looking up to you you know so it's like right. you got to carry that torch and carry it to the point where you know, you're you're bringing up the next the next Meg Thee Stallion or the next Erica Banks for that matter. You know what I mean? And um, and I love to see it. Um, but now that you've gotten your feet wet, so to speak, you know, and you got a couple, you know, new accolades, and I know that it's kind of difficult to really, you know, play the play the field when it's when it's time to get in the studio. So, how have your studio sessions been since things have started to bubble up? Because I think I heard your song in the club here in Atlanta a couple times and and that says a lot to be a new artist and your songs already getting spins in the club like how does that feel that feels really good you know um really that started back at home in Dallas like because my music been playing in a club in Dallas for me like a year so uh-huh. you know for it to now be in other states it's starting to really seem like it's really happening for me you know um but it's really exciting you know I love what's going on I'm just taking everything in and I'm just going with it (laughs) as you should now let me ask you this there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of um play on colorism on especially on females in the rap game all right what's your take on colorism and how do you feel about people who judge or or not even judge but are prejudiced towards a darker complexion or a darker melanin in the um in the in the business because of because if a girl's darker doesn't mean that she's not more you know right experienced like she yeah the darker the berry the sweeter the juice I've heard I, you right know, I don't know you tell me right <laughs> now I feel like um it's definitely something that's going on 
um, I think it's really sad because at the end of the day, we all black, you know. Um, me personally, I don't really think, well, I'm not going to say I don't really think that it's going to affect me because it might. I'm just going to say I don't care if I do come into a situation where I have to deal with it because at the end of the day, I'm a bomb artist. My shit's hard as fuck and I'm undeniable. You know, I hate to toot my own horn, but I got to say that just so what I'm saying makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody was to try to downplay me as an artist or as a person because, you know, the next girl might be a lighter tone, just know out of us too, hey, we know who who's what, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to the rap, so that's how that matters to me, but it's definitely something that's going on, it's definitely something that's unfair to a lot of women, but I feel like I'll be able to be one of those women who can, like, speak up for the brown skins and speak up for the darker tone girls, you know, so, yeah. No, and I agree with that, and I think that's 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 an testament to who you are and an testament to your name, and that's going to live with you, that's your legacy, you know. Um, for the young black girl or the young brown girl or the young white girl, for that matter, who's inspired by you or wants to be the next rapper singer doctor model whatever it is that they want to be what do you tell them to inspire them really just keep at it you know whatever it is that you're doing it might not even be rapping whatever it is just keep at it perfect your craft um believe in yourself and don't depend on anybody you know because if you're depending on somebody you could be waiting forever for something to happen so it's really all in you you know it really all depends on how bad you want it so that's what i would say that's dope so what's one thing since we've been in pandemic we've been in the pandemic for almost about what eight months now what's one thing that you've learned during this pandemic about yourself or that something that you've taught yourself i learned patience during the pandemic because me I'm very impatient. I don't have patience. So, you know, living through this, I've had to learn that, hey, Erica, sometimes it's cool to just sit back and wait on something to come, or it's cool to just sit back and wait on a call or wait on a booking, you know, because once I started being patient, they started rolling in. So I just learned just to be patient and just to kind of, you know, be okay with waiting sometimes. That's real. That's real. Is there one city, right, that you can't wait, even if it's, if you, maybe you've already performed there, but is there one city that you can't wait to perform at or that you've already performed already? Yeah, Dallas. I haven't performed in my home city yet. Wow, that would be amazing. And, and you know, that's kind of like a good situation. It's, it's like a Catch-22 situation because, like, you don't want to perform too early, but you don't want to perform too late to the point where they're like, oh, she bougie. She ain't even right. in her city yet, you know? <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's it's good, though, because now you're giving them a build-up story. Like, even this interview itself is going to let people know that, hey, I've been working, <laughs> you know? Right. So um, what's on the agenda? Like, what's what's new and what's next? I know you got your project out that's out right now. Mm -hmm. So what's on the agenda for um, anything coming up next? Um, so we just put out Busted as the single. We're getting ready to push to that. We're getting ready to drop the music video for that um, next Tuesday. We just shot the video a couple of weeks ago. So we're getting ready to put out to that, go crazy behind it, um, let it do what it does. And then, you know, in the midst of that, we'll just be working on the next project. It's your girl, Erica Banks, and I'm rocking with Starter on Dirty Daily Podcast. Period.